Hey guys, I first of all want to take some time to thank you all for watching my video and leaving comments on my Facebook and sending me messages. You guys are so awesome. Thanks for the encouraging words and I'm glad that this is helping somebody. Um, I'm glad that you guys are getting some kind of encouragement out of it. It makes me feel good to know that I'm doing these videos for a purpose. I think I touched on a little bit in the first video why I keep a blog and why I want to make, keep making these videos because it helps me cope. It helps me be able to talk about things that I struggle with and I think it's going to benefit somebody out there because watching these videos and reading people's story online helped me cope and I love being able, like I said, to meet those people and talk to them and kind of share stories and share struggles and it really has just been a benefit for me. So thank you so much for watching my first video. I know it was lengthy, I know it was kind of repetitive, but I appreciate the kind words and the support that you guys have sent me. Today, I knew I said I'd do a Q&A video, but things are hectic right now because I'm getting ready to go back home to visit, and I'm not going to have time to make that video at least for another week or two because when I'm home, I'm just going to try to spend as much time with my friends and family as I can because I'm only going to be home for about a week. So um, it's very important for me to see my friends and family that I haven't seen since my accident. So um, I appreciate your guys' patience on that. And if you do have questions, I'm going to leave my email below. Feel free to Facebook, email me, anything like that on any of my social networks. If I don't want to answer you publicly, I'll just message you back privately. But I will try to get some collective questions and do a Q&A video um, in a couple weeks. So thank you so much for that. Um, today I want to talk about something I feel like a lot of people don't touch in their videos dealing with spinal cord injuries. I have seen a couple videos but I don't feel like they go in depth very much and I kind of want to. I do apologize if I start to get emotional. This is like the third time I recorded this video. All, all the three times I've ended up crying and I have to stop because I hate crying in front of people. So I do have a note card of things I want to talk about. It has doodles on it. I'm sorry. And so if you see me looking down, it's because I'm trying to remember everything that I want to talk about. The first thing that I think is important to talk about is the thought of being invincible. Um, I'm 20 years old. I was 19 when I had my accident. And I knew bad things happened to people. I knew I could get in a car accident. I'd been in several, but they were all minor, and I'd never been hurt. Um, I had the feeling of I'm 19. Uh, death is so far away from me, it won't happen to me. And I don't know why exactly I had that thought because I had seen people around me be affected. I've had friends who have died way too young and you hear about it so often now, it breaks my heart. And um, I always thought, well, in my situation, car accident, it's either going to kill me or I'm just going to have some broken ribs, you know, maybe some fractures, I don't know, but I'll end up making it through. I never thought of the middle ground of being paralyzed and having to struggle to do things that are simple in life, and I'll touch, I'll touch on that a little bit later in the video, but um, I, I never thought of that, and you always think, that's not going to be me, um, it's not going to be me, and it was me, and... I really, really just want to stress that because it's not only with spinal cord injuries, it's everything. You have to definitely be thankful for today and know that tomorrow isn't promised. So um, value the relationship you have with your friends, your family, because you never know when God's going to call you home. And that's something that I learned from my accident and I'm really thankful that I had a chance to kind of correct that because before I wasn't, I didn't value those things. I was living life. Um, recklessly and I I touched on this in my blog but I feel like this was God's way of kind of showing me that I think he was trying to tell me things before and I was just too busy and I just kind of rushed him off and I think something extreme he had to do to get my attention so and I don't want to seem like I'm complaining in this video because I wouldn't take anything back I just think it's gonna be a benefit to someone out there to hear the struggles and what I do to help cope because the mental aspect of having a life-changing event is a lot harder to overcome than the physical aspect of it, I think. Um, I wasn't a very active person before my accident, so it kind of does suck having to work out and have to get strong and um, stuff like that. But it's easier for me to handle that than it is to handle the depression and I don't want to say necessarily depression, but the mental aspect and what it does to you mentally. Um, 
I have a lot of what ifs, like what happens if God would have taken me that day and I would have got to go to heaven and I would have got to be greeted in heaven by my granddad and my grandma with smiling faces. I wouldn't have to deal with pain. I wouldn't have to see, I wouldn't have to see my family struggle because something that not a lot of people realize is having a spinal cord injury doesn't just affect you. It doesn't just affect me personally, it affects everyone around me. Um, it affects my parents, my sister, my brother, my niece, it affects everyone. And it's hard, it's really hard to see, um, my mom always tells me it's really hard for her to see me struggle trying to do simple things like taking a shower because I'm 20 years old and it's kind of like I'm two years, again, two years old again. I have to learn how to walk again. I have to learn how to dress myself. I have to learn how to do all those things all over again because I lost that with my accident. Um, and I kind of, I think I've said this before, but I kind of feel like my accident took a lot of things away from me. Um, before my accident, I was going to school. I was working full time. I had a boyfriend and I was getting ready to move out on my own. And I was living the life of a 19 year old. I got to go, come and go as I please. I had money. I could just do whatever I wanted. And um, my accident took that away from me. And I'm not, I wouldn't go back and I wouldn't change anything. Um, I'm so thankful for my accident. It's a huge blessing and I have learned so much. I've gained so much from my accident that I wouldn't go back and change it. Yeah, it sucks not being able to walk, but um, I feel like I always have the best seat in the house. So, um, And one of the things I kind of think a lot of you realize is that I cope by making jokes. Uh, I like to um, just kind of make light of the situation because I know a lot of people... Um, when I go out in public, people stare at me. People will look. Um, and at first, it was frustrating. I was like, why are those people staring at me? Have they never seen a girl in a wheelchair before? And I feel like I kind of still struggle a little bit with, like, what are people going to think of me? But then I realized if somebody can't look past me being in a wheelchair, then they're probably not a good person for me to be hanging out with. If um, me being in a wheelchair is going to affect someone's thoughts of me, then they're probably not somebody that I want to be hanging out with. So I kind of get over that quick. It's still something I kind of struggle with a little bit, but I've always been a confident person and I feel like um, being in a wheelchair is no different. I just have to sit all the time rather than walking and I always joke and say who needs to walk anyway. So that's something I kind of do to cope and um, I really don't remember what it feels like to walk. Like I can't remember what it feels like to have water on my feet or what it feels like to have soft carpet touch my feet. I don't remember any of that. And uh, I'm only five months out and I, I know I struggle a lot now. And it's frustrating because like I said, things are hard for me. And um, once I get strong enough and far enough in my progress, um, this stuff will become easy for me. It'll be like I never, I wouldn't have known any different. So it'll be just like walking for me but I'll have to do things a little bit different. And once I get far enough in my progress, that's, like I said, it's not gonna be a huge um, problem. It is now, because I'm not very far along in my progress, but um, once I reach those steps, it won't be hard for me at all. Um, I feel like a lot of people um, look up to me as inspiration because I say so strong, but um, the way I kind of look at it is if this is what I have I was given in life, if I'm going to be in a wheelchair forever, I might as well make the best of it. I'm 20 years old and being in a wheelchair isn't a life sentence. It's not, my life doesn't end. My life has been put on hold right now, but once I get strong enough, I will be able to go back to work. I will be able to go back to school. I'll be able to live on my own. My goal right now, obviously, is to be as independent as I can if I'm not walking. So, and I'm not going to stop till I get there. I'm a very independent person, and it's one of the hardest things I think for me right now is having to cope with um, relying on others. Um, it sucks because people aren't really reliable, but like I said, I've really supported family and it's that they've been so helpful through this. So thank you guys. I love you. And I have no idea where I'd be in this journey without you. So, um, 
I want to also touch on something that's kind of ironic and funny about this situation is I have a tattoo on my foot and it says God dances over me and the saying is ironic. I got it when I was 18 and it's funny now because the saying obviously I can't walk, I can't dance. I couldn't dance before but um, the saying it means a lot to me. It meant a lot to me then, but it means a lot to me now just as much because uh, a lot of people that I came through, like the EMTs that were at my rec scene, um, they remember me by my tattoo. And when I went back to have my checkup appointment for my back, the x-ray lady, she was working the day that they brought me into the ICU and she helped um, go like do my x-rays and stuff when I first got there and she remembered me by the tattoo foot and it's kind of uh, It's became a way to witness without even realizing I was witnessing and um, It's just really funny to me that people remember me by that and uh, It's something I kind of look to Now more than ever because I know that my father in heaven is watching out for me and I know that even though I struggle and I say, God, why did you do this to me? God, why did you pick me? Why did this have to happen to me? Um, I know he sees the bigger picture and I know that he sees um, he sees this and he's going he's gonna to have my back. I feel like when I pray a lot of the things I get in response is, don't worry, Sabrina, I've got your back. I've got this. I know what I'm doing. And um, it's just so encouraging to be able to read the Bible and be able to have that communication with God. And that's something that I'm also thankful for for my accident because before my accident, I had a problem with trusting God. And now I feel like the only thing I can do is trust God. And um, I, like I said, I do a lot of venting. There's been nights where I've spent three to four hours just crying, venting to God. And he always puts someone or something in my path. And I'll share an example of that. Um, when I was at Burnside, I talked about my insurance saying that I was plateaued and they saying I wasn't making improvements and they were thinking about sending me home. And at this point in my progress, I was not even strong enough to transfer myself. So I wasn't able to get from a bed to my chair. I wasn't able to do any of that on my own. And I knew that if I came home at that point in time, that I is going to be really hard on my family to take care of me because I couldn't do simple things like transfer myself. And it, it's very important for me to be able to, to do that stuff because, like I said, my goal is to ultimately be independent if I'm not walking. So um, I remember that night that my therapist told me um, they may be sending you home, let your family know. Um, my sister came over to paint my toenails because she would come and visit me in the nursing home a lot. And... Uh, I was I was really upset and I was like Chastity um, I'm scared I think I'm gonna get to go home and I'm not ready yet and I know you guys aren't ready and I just don't want to have to deal with that stress right now and that was the night that I first had toe movement and I share that story because um, I was really really bummed out and I was really upset and I feel like um, that toe movement that I had was God's way of showing me not to worry he said don't stress, don't worry about this, I'm taking control, and you don't need to worry about anything. And there's a, Bi a Bible verse that says, do not worry, but pray always. And I am a huge worrier, and I've had to change that now, where if I, if I start to worry about something, I just pray. I give it all to God, because I know He has my best interest in mind, and I know He's going to do things that are the best for me, even if... It's not the way I want things. I think I posted a status a couple, a while back that says one of the greatest things about God is he always provides. It may not be how or when we want it, but he always provides. And that's something that I will stand true through this whole accident. God has placed so many amazing and inspiring people in my life to help me get through this journey that... I cannot even express like I'm so thankful for everyone that's been a part of my life um, and helped me because you guys don't realize the things you guys say to me and the things that you guys encourage me with um, they help me a lot and I am so thankful for all of you you don't realize how much you 
touch my life and affect me and I'm so grateful for all of you. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because it's almost 15 minutes long and I don't want to have to have another lengthy video. So I want to thank you so much for watching and I hope that this will help inspire somebody and like I said I'm going to leave some links below so if you have any questions, want to read my blog, just want to talk to me, please feel free to email me and I will talk to you guys as soon as I can. Thank you. Bye-bye.